quick way of adding design to a pewter sheet uh, is by using some rubber stamps and I'm going to show you today how to uh, get some design onto the metal, emboss it very simply and then uh, color it and uh, just another way of getting some design on and uh, making it into a, uh, an embossing project. So these are some of the supplies that we'll use. I know it looks like a lot of things, uh, but when we break it down, it's, it's not that complicated. So my project that I'd like to do today is with a small piece of a pewter sheet. As usual, I've marked the back. I'm going to uh, attach it uh, when it's completed with the Sukwang double-sided adhesive tape. tape. Obviously, you can use contact glue or uh, whatever glue. My little substrate is uh, tin and I've sanded the tin at the top so that it creates some tooth uh, when we do attach the, the project with the adhesive tape. The tools I'll use is very basic so we have our um, Teflon tip tool, a little one of my favorite tools is the little pr uh, plastic eraser tool and then a paper stump that looks all grubby and soft. Um, you can certainly use a pencil or a pen as well uh, to make some marks. I have my mat set here which is a foam mat, a paper mat and a hard surface. Um, we'll need some scissors, a sanding block for sanding the box and then a piece of tape to attach the design. Obviously we're going to need some stamps. So the stamps that I chose are uh, these, this one happens to be from Stampendous and I do apologize in advance. I'm not a very good um, cleaner of stamps and I kind of use them and then I don't always keep track of where they were from. But in essence you need a stamp, like a simple stamp with um, very um, simple outlines for uh, our main piece and then we've got some background stamps and just a tip that the stamps that work the best on metal sheet is uh, always the red ones I find or the rubber ones I find that the silicon stamps don't transfer the ink very well and then talking about ink we have our stays on black ink um, it's it's very true to its name. Once you've stamped it onto the metal, it stays on. So this is one of my favorite uh, inks to use. Um, once we've completed uh, our embossing, we do need to apply a filler. And for the sake of uh, getting this done rather quickly, I'm always using um, the beeswax with the glass dropper. You can use other uh, fillers like um, uh, you can use the Mod Podge Dimensionals or some spackle. All of those things require some extra time to dry. So I need to, I'll be using the wax because it sets in a few minutes and then we can move on. To seal the project uh, in bef uh, before I apply the color, I use any brand of uh, spray lacquer. In this case, I'll just use the satin and I seal the the ink uh, before I add some color and usually um, just using you can use clear glossy or clear satin or clear matte whatever works for you and this is just the regular hardware brand uh, that I have available so nothing too special to apply color today I'll just use some alcohol inks I love the the transparency and the vibrancy of the colors and uh, I'll show you a little bit more about um, how to use the colors when we get to that. I have a little paintbrush. I like applying the colors with paintbrush and then I just use some juice can lids as my palette uh, when I do that. So we'll get ourselves ready here and get started. So the first thing that I need to do is apply the ink to the stamp. I've got my stamps that I've selected here and this would be my stamp and this my little piece of pewter and I've already marked the back of my pewter with a line so I know that's the back and we're going to apply the ink onto the front 
of the pewter. You can angle it a little bit, get it down. And I know some of the stampers out they might be a little horrified with my technique. Um, I'm no stamper, but um, I do know uh, that it does work great on the metal. So let's hope for something good. You can sometimes just lift your stamp and see if it transferred well. Uh, this is good. Good enough. And now I want to create a mask over my butterfly so I can put some background on and I'm just going to use some painter's tape and make a light little fold around sticky bit here so that when I put the mask on the the stamp uh, the stamped image it, it'll stay in place so I'm going to pop that down And it's always good when you do stamp to, for the sake of design and balance, to add some of some similarities. Uh, I do repeat the stamp uh, sometimes, especially if it's uh, script. And let's see where this goes. Not as successful, but I can stamp again. Okay, so now I can remove my mask of the butterfly and we can start embossing so let's clean this up get the mask part off and the great thing about having a very simple design like a butterfly is that it's very easy to then push it out and uh, transfer the design and have it grounded in the metal so i'm using my foam mat and my Teflon tip tool and I'm going to just use um, my Teflon tip tool and focusing on the main outlines of the butterfly so just the primary wings here the little body oops and little bit of artistic license here so you'll see that I'm focusing on the main wings here and we'll end up with two wings on either side and then when I see these little antenna here obviously when I turn the metal around I won't be able to see where they are unless I draw exactly on top of them so when I turn my pewter around you can see on the back that I've transferred the design of the the main uh, wings 
and I've got my antenna here so if I want my antenna to be raised on the front I'm gonna go and choose a side I'm gonna go just on the inside of that line I did on the front on both sides just on the inside I'll turn it around put it on the hard surface and then refine alongside those lines so that they are now raised embossing I should have probably waited for the ink to dry a little bit more uh, but we'll make this work and then when you turn it around again now we can start working with our inside of our wings I'm going to take my Teflon tip tool again and just push right alongside the line that I've created from the front right alongside you want to kind of let that initial line from the front guide your tool push up against that line and this is the way that we start our high relief embossing push up right against that line so you're not making uh, any new marks you're pretty much just pushing up against that existing line and starting the first process to I'm actually going to go make this line over here and then just bring it over here and then when we turn it around we can see how this starts taking shape so you'll see that there's a little round area for the head and this is the the body part here this long part I'll just use my Teflon tip tool and I can even create some little marks there just inside here and then ideally we would have wanted to use a ball tool for the head but I didn't uh, bring that out so once we've got that done we turn it around you put it on a hard surface and I'm going to use my Teflon tip my sorry my little plastic eraser tool and what we want to do is we want to flatten the area around the design and you can see that already this design is taking uh, creating some has some volume to it and we'll push that out a little bit more after we flatten the background here I could also use my paper stump but I find that the paper stump tends to remove the ink and I don't want to lose too much of my ink here so now we're ready to push it out a little bit further I'm going to go back on my foam mat and use my paper stump and gently 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 push out the inside of the wings going to grab a smaller uh, sorry a ball tool so the ball tool is just a rounded uh, stylus and I am going to push just in that little round area with the ball tool and make the little body a little bit rounder I can also use my ball tool um, uh, to make an elongated round line so turn it around put it on the hard surface use my handy dandy little eraser tool here and just flatten the area again around the raised areas so at some point when we're doing high relief embossing you kind of have to decide that it's high enough so I feel like I could potentially push out a little bit more on the uh, top wings there so I'll do that okay go back on the hard surface and just flatten the background and then once you flatten the background on the hard surface you can see how the little design starts popping um, some more okay so at this point I feel that we are ready to fill this 
uh, with a wax or some kind of a, a filler in order for this to hold its shape. If we didn't fill it and I would push on it, it won't hold the, the raised uh, high relief. So I'm going to push that out again and then we'll take a quick little break here and I'll heat up the wax and uh, we'll fill this up. Okay, so in order for our uh, high relief to hold its form, I'm going to use some melted beeswax. I use uh, pure beeswax because then it sticks better and melted it in a little skillet. I use a glass dropper. Always warm the glass dropper up and then turn my piece around, make sure that it's level and then I squirt and dry. So you want to make sure that your wax isn't too hot, it shouldn't be splattering and then I work fast by squirting and just moving the, the wax as I go along and a little bit goes a long way. You don't need to overfill, usually just filling it to the edge of the concave area does the trick and then obviously the little antenna that I have there is a low relief embossing and it doesn't really require any filler because it'll hold its shape if we were to push on the front. So that does it for the filler. I'm going to just put the wax pot off and away. And that takes a few seconds for that to cool off and then we can work with it again. So that'll just, you can see how it cools off and as it cools off the color of the wax becomes a little duller. Once this is uh, set, I'm going to turn it around. I want to add a few, takes a little bit of a texture wheel dot uh, around the edge and um, just another way of adding some interest to the to the piece. So this is good enough. I'm going to just go on my paper pad here and use my little texture wheel and just make some interest around the edge here. I had a little spool of wax earlier. So you want to move your piece around so that you don't have to be a contortionist when you use the texture wheel. And there we go. And I don't use a ruler or anything. I just kind of use my paper pad and I I do it a, uh, a freehand line. Um, I find that if I try and get in there with a ruler it actually makes things a little bit less controlled. So idea is just to let loose and let it go and we'll make a nice little additional border here. The other thing that we could do once we've got our um, wax in and it's cooled off is we could engrave into these areas. We do have the wax underneath uh, to hold the form and um, I'm just going to do a couple of lines here to show you that you could engrave into it now because we do have the wax underneath, uh, but I won't do the whole uh, project. Okay, so I'm going to add my double-sided adhesive tape to the back of the metal. And I pre-cut this already and I'm going to just put that on. And if I had any of the little bits sticking over, I'm just going to use my X-Acto knife and just cut those sticky bits off. So you can obviously also use glue, contact glue to attach it to the tin or um, I've used Aileen's tacky glue as well which is a white glue and you just have to give it a little bit time on both sides to become tacky before you attach it. So just a reminder that I've already sanded my tin down 
just to give it a little bit of tooth and that's quite important uh, if you want to make sure that in the end it does sit well so pop my piece onto the so the double-sided tape is a really quick way of attaching metal to any surface and I've had lots of great success with it and I find it a lot easier than using the glue and it's just as effective so down it goes and my ink I don't want to disturb my ink too much put it down and then I'm going to use my side of my paper stump and just burnish over the edge and what's really neat about using something that is like a tin is when you burnish your pewter sheet over the edge very well um, it almost looks like it's part of the tin. I'm going to use my little burnishing tool. And the trick is to work with it. So it might take a little bit of time and go around it a few times and just do the work. So the metal stretches nicely and you just need to Give it time and burnish it down so that it attaches nicely to the edge of the tin and looks like it's part of it. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside and quickly spray um, the design so that when I apply the alcohol inks it doesn't disturb the ink that uh, from the stays on black marker or from the stays on black and I want to retain my details on this so we'll take a quick break I'll go spray it we'll wait for it to dry and then we'll color okay so my little tin has been sprayed with the satin clear uh, rust-oleum uh, sealant and it took about 10 minutes for it to uh, to dry and you can see because it's satin that it's kind of toned down the gloss of the pewter sheet as well. So when you spray, the one thing to keep in mind is not to disturb the, um, we want to not disturb the project. And I usually just do like a ch 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 no ch because what will happen is it will activate the the ink and your whole design will start running so just keep that in mind a light coat and uh, when you have a little bit more time so light coat this way give it about 10-15 minutes and then you can give it another spray coat on the other uh, sort of going in the other direction so I'm going to be using um, some of my favorite colors in the um, alcohol inks and these are the Tim Holtz ones so these are kind of the, the colors that always make me happy and um, nine times out of ten I get a good result with that. So these are uh, the butterscotch, poppy field, lettuce and denim and then I use my juice can lids as a, a kind of a palette um, to do that and to be honest I kind of just like to to play with it a little bit and we don't necessarily need to put too much ink on it's just to add a little bit of color and then once we've added um, some color uh, we can look at maybe taking some of the color away so when I apply color I kind of just want to get a little more of an idea of color than really getting in the and making this uh, a coloring in project. So green is always one of my favorite colors to include. And you can see the beautiful transparency of the alcohol inks, just um, still allowing us to see the design underneath and uh, creating some interest here. So dab, dab, dab. And we're not gonna do uh, too much um, agitation of the ink um, I don't want to kind of um, get my sealant moving again.
Okay, so once I've applied my color and obviously you use your color palette that makes you happy, we want to try and make sure that this dries. And um, of course, you can always blow on it or just give it time to dry. I'm going to kind of uh, soldier on here. Uh, I don't want to use a heat tool on it, obviously, because of the, the wax underneath. But you can, once it's dry, you can easily scratch into it again um, and remove some of the color here and there. I'm going to, I probably should really wait for this to dry. Um, and I'll just give it a quick little blow here. But what I want to do is remove some of the color with my brass brush and this is just a little uh, brass brush here and I want to remove some of the color so that I can get some highlights again ideally definitely guys wait for this <laughs> to dry a little bit more um, and then when you use your brass brush you can create kind of movement with uh, the way that you are removing the color you can also use a little sanding block. I find I like the use of the brass brush a little bit more um, because I can kind of uh, control the where I remove the color a little bit better and um, you'll definitely get better results if you wait for the ink to dry unlike what I'm doing here right now. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of uh, where we're at with um, stamping on metal, embossing the metal, adding some color and then once I've done this uh, removing of the color again, if I wanted to with the, the brass brush, I could, if you're anything like me, come back again and work with it again. But that's where we are, um, stamping on metal with uh, rubber stamp and stays on ink, adding some color with the alcohol inks and then scratching it up a little bit. And then once this ink is dry, I'll use my spray lacquer again and just seal the inks again with a very light coat of ch -ch 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 and your project is done. <laughs>